So I'm Matt Berlin. I'm the CEO of Nice Bus. We're a nonprofit school bus company headquartered in New York City. We operate 800 buses, so that makes us one of the four largest bus companies in New York City and one of the 20, 30 largest bus companies in the country. And we're excited about the work we're doing to lead the way to electrification in New York City, in New York State, and we hope the country. We are a nonprofit school bus company, and we were created to improve school busing. And really, we have three goals. So one of them is to provide good bus service. The second is to provide transparency so people understand the cost of busing. And the third thing we're created to do is our interest in innovation and making busing better. So we got interested in electrification really for two reasons. It's no secret to people that uh, buses, especially diesel buses, are horribly polluting. We also transport kids through some of the most polluted areas in New York City and in the country. And so the air is really terrible, very high asthma rates. So it's also really important for the drivers. I mean, that indoor cabin air, you know, 20% of that uh, comes from the exhaust. Well, that affects our drivers as well. Uh, so all of that had us interested in electrification and cleaning up busing. But then in addition, in New York City and New York State, there's a mandate that we go electric. Uh, both the city and state have mandated electrification by 2035, and we want to be ahead of that. Yeah, it's silly to sugarcoat it, right? It is really challenging to plan for electric vehicles. Challenging for a lot of reasons. Some of it is that this is all very new. Uh, you're making decisions, especially around electric infrastructure, that are gonna um, that are gonna have an impact for a very long time. And it's hard to make a decision about the amount of power you need, about which products to use. So it's important to have some partners that you can trust. It's also important to take a risk and realize that if we're gonna move forward in the future, some people are gonna to have to step out a little bit into the unknown and realize that that's okay. Yeah, charge management is really important for us in two ways. Uh, you know, one of them is that because there's a lot of uncertainty, right? We're buying products, we're buying systems, so it's really important for us to have separate control over the chargers than the chargers themselves. But, but second, one of the challenges we've learned about, I mean, it seems sort of elementary now, is that we know that we shouldn't plan for all of the vehicles to be charging at the exact same time. And so charge management's gonna allow us to regulate how much power we draw, and that in turn, in addition to controlling our electric bill, that's gonna enable us to control the amount of power that we need, which then affects and reduces the cost of electrification and also speeds up the time to electrify. Yeah, so one of the other things that we're doing with charge management software in our chargers is you know, taking advantage of the batteries and using them to put power back into the grid or back into the building. So we are, as part of a project that we're doing, we're putting in place some bi-directional chargers so that these chargers can accept power from the grid when power is plentiful, when it's cheap, and then they can discharge back to the grid or back to the building when power is expensive. We think that's gonna not only give us the chance to sell back, you know, to, to buy low and sell high, right, to reduce the cost of electrification, but it also gives us some redundancy and enables us to serve as a backup power supply for our buses and for our community. So this world of electrification is you know, like anything, right? When you get into it, it seems very picky and little, but there's really exciting stuff going on here at this very depot. And one of the challenges is that the utility normally, right, the way they behave is they want to provide power, assuming that we're charging all of the vehicles at once. But for them to do that, right, that requires a tremendous amount of power. It requires a tremendous amount of time. It, it's incredibly expensive, both for the utility and us. So what we've done with charge management is we've got the utility, and we think this is the, we know this is the first time in Con Ed's case, in our local utilities case, that the utility has allowed us to oversubscribe, to put more power demand on our electric meter than the system can provide, but to have the electric company agree that our charge management software will control the amount of demand. So even though, kind of in theory, we could, we could draw more power, we won't oversubscribe because the software is going to limit our need. 
And that's really, really, again, I know this is kind of picky -une, but that's really significant in reducing the cost of electrification and reducing the, the time it takes to build the infrastructure. So working with Mobility House has really been great. We, um, we, we began our electric school bus journey uh, really with the opportunity to apply for a grant from our state research, energy research and development authority, NYSERDA. And then Mobility House has helped us every step of the way of thinking through our engineering, meeting with utilities, evaluating charging systems, and really um, holding our hand, really helping us in a technical way kind of think through a lot of the complications about electrification. And what's been nice is that they've got a, a global perspective, right? They're not just doing things elsewhere in New York City, elsewhere in the Northeast, elsewhere in the US, but around the world. And so that expertise coming to us and that expertise from a, you know, a company that really does the work has helped us make smart decisions. The other great thing about Lily House, frankly, is the people. You know, it has been, you know, this, there's no clear pathway to electrification. And having people, having a team on the other end of the phone that will answer questions, no matter how dumb or how basic, even if you're asking the third or fourth time, that's really been helpful as you know, we go on a journey where there really isn't a, a completely well-trod pathway.